channel. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, you were quite correct, folks. You noticed that I, it was satire in my last video, autism, a serious disease. Well, um, I wouldn't hold it against anyone to call it a disease if that's what they want to call it, because at the end of the day, you know, some people literally do see it as a disease, um, and I can't blame them, to be honest. Um, it, I, I personally just call it a disorder. Um, but like I said, if, so, if someone calls it a disease, you know, that does not in the least offend me whatsoever. I know it offends some people in the N in the M NDM, but that's because they're so obsessed with language that, you know, people who actually are disabled have bigger fish to fry, to use a metaphor, quite frankly. So, you know, but yes, it was a satire. An actual fact part of it was that aimed at the disease of neurodiversity itself. So I don't know if you got that. When I said autism a serious disease, I was also um, kind of uh, indirectly... Um, uh, in a sense, pointing to the diseased nature of a neurodiversity movement as well. So, uh, yeah. So, in this video, I want to mention an article I've been reading today by Professor Uta Frith. Now, Professor Uta Frith, for those of you who don't know, is a very well-known um, autism scientist. She's been researching in the field ever since autism first became a diagnosed thing. Um, she's really been very seminal in terms of um, doing research into autism and I think she's really great. She really, you know, she knows autism for what it is, a very serious medical disorder. She doesn't beat around a bush and she's highly critical of the neurodiversity movement. She's now in her early 80s, I think, but she's one of the very few scientists who are critical of the neurodiversity movement. Even Simon Baron cohen who... Um, if you ask me, has come out with a lot of um, things that are quite baloney, like a stream male brain, a person I don't agree with. Um, but um, he, ha he did do some good work on like empathy though in autism, which I do agree with, like showing there is a fundamental problem with cognitive empathy, which now many people in the neurodiversity movement um, criticise. But he did do some good work in that area. But unfortunately, even Simon Van Cohen has jumped on the neurodiversity bandwagon and he was involved in diagnosing Christine McGuinness, for example. Um, if you ask me isn't autistic <gasps> I'm gonna get cancelled but um yes but uh, there are very few scientists out there nowadays who really do speak the truth who really do like what's the word don't beat around the bush basically and Uta Frith is one of them um and um we need we need more people like her you know she's getting on in her years now and I do worry what will happen when she's no longer here and Who's going to fight for who's going to be our spokesperson then? But she is our spokesperson, Uta Frith. Um, I tried to contact her, but she hasn't got in contact because she's very busy. But um, I would quite like to have a, I would like quite like to have a conversation with her because I do really, really agree with what she says. Anyway, so I found this article. Um, it's called "The Fear of Categories," and and the question is, can we overcome it? Um, so I'm just going to like read out to you the main points from this article. I took extensive notes in it. Um, so I'm just going to read it out, really. So this is what she says. So it was a keynote lecture that Uta Frith gave in October the 30th of 2020. So at the height of the pandemic, this was all done virtually. So not that long ago. Um, and I found this article, by the way, just by Googling Uta Frith and neurodiversity because I already knew that she was against neurodiversity. So that's how I came across the article. Um, so she says she trained in clinical psychology in the 1960s. And she asked the question, what is normal? What is abnormal? Or in modern language, what is neurotypical and what is neurodiverse? I was thinking when I read that, that maybe we should just start going back to basics and start calling a spade a spade. So maybe from now on I'm going to start talking about um, abnorm abnormal people and stop being around the bush. I I'm autistic, I'm abnormal, or, or at least part of my brain is abnormal. Um, I'm not neurodiverse, I'm abnormal. I've got an abnormal brain. Let's stop beating around the bush. I actually prefer concrete, scientific, medical language over all this ideological baloney that tries to make things all nice and shiny, you know. Um, and, they're, and they're like normal people. Some people think that's offensive. No, it's not. It's just speaking truth. So, yeah. So I actually think maybe we should start doing that from now on, actually. And imagine all those identity fanatics was one a mile if um, autism started to be called an abnormal pathology. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I do, would so be so happy about having. Seriously. But anyway, this is what Uta Frith says. She says, I feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the heterogeneity of the autism spectrum. 
Is that how you say heterogeneity? I might be pronouncing that word heterogeneity. I think it's how you pronounce it. The term neurodiverse confuses me. She says, neurodiversity implies that brain difference, whatever they're due to, are simply a part of natural variation. But if we cannot talk about autism as a disorder that results from a brain abnormality and results in cognitive deficits and in behavioural impairments, note your language, why should we even try to diagnose autism? Indeed, that's exactly what I've been thinking. Like, all these people like Melanie Sykes who get on their, um, you know, like celebrities like that who aren't even autistic, I know I'm going to get cancelled, but seriously, if they are not, they should not even be diagnosing those people. Like, people like that who, you know, have bear no resemblance to autism as it was originally defined. Like, I, like, I know I don't either, but at least I'll, like, massively fit into the original impairment model of Asperger's with my, like, extreme problems with relationships and stuff. But, like, these people like Melanie Sykes... They literally, what, there's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> and like, okay, like they might, I'm not denying they have struggles, but when I say there's nothing wrong with them, I mean there's nothing wrong with them in like an organic brain disordered sense. Like they might have like some other condition maybe. Um, and maybe there is something, some slight difference they have, maybe. But if you ask me, they shouldn't be diagnosed autistic. I'm getting stronger all the time in what I, in what I think. I don't care anymore. I'm saying it as it is. I'm getting so fed up with it that literally I am no longer trying to hide what I think. I'm no longer, I have to say it, I have to say it. And lots of people agree with me, so I'm not going to try and hide just because some people <laughs> might try and cancel me. And Uta Frith agrees with what I'm saying. I bet she thinks that um, 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 Sykes isn't properly autistic anyway, so wait for it, I'm coming on to that. She really does lay whip in a minute, I gave diagnosis of autism, so wait for it. She's a scientist, so don't just take it from me, this is a scientist. <laughs> okay. Um, she says, yeah, so why should we even diagnose autism? We, um, by the way, Melanie Sykes has um, got on TV and was saying that autism isn't a disorder and stuff. Well, of course it's not a disorder, because it's not, it's not a disorder for her, so, you know. But she, that's what I mean, because it's not a disorder for her. But if it's not a disorder for her, then is she even autistic? Can't have it both ways. Um, so Uta Friff says, why should... Why should we support basic research aims to find causes and treatment in the way we support um, autistic people? Basic research. Why should we support basic research aims to find causes and treatment in a way we support basic research to find, say, congenital heart problems? So why, why, why do we need to even do research? In other words, if um, autism is just a normal variation. If autism is just a normal variation, like height or skin colour or any of these other natural variations which are harmless and just part of being, just part of natural diversity, you know, if autism is the same as all of that, which is what some of these neurodiversity people are saying, why do we need to diagnose it? Why do people even need to diagnose it if it's not a disorder? You know, if it's, if it's not a disorder and it's not disabling you and it's not an impairment, why do you need a diagnosis? And why... You know, because you don't diagnose, like, being gay or things like that, do you? You don't go to the doctor for being gay and ask to be diagnosed for gay. Of course not, because being gay isn't an impairment and it's not doesn't have a cognitive malfunction at its centre. It's just a normal variation. And autism is clearly not the same as that. And yet many people seem to treat it like that now, with this natural variation crap. Um, Uta Frith says, We need a programme of research to find out what makes autism autism, but there are problems. We do not get a sense of a natural entity for many diagnosed today, she says. With the creeping extension of the spectrum, prototypical autism may have got lost. It is hard for me to look in the same way at the very disabled children who participated in her own experiments a long time ago and the amazingly accomplished people who are today's favourite experimental subjects. Are they even autistic, I often wonder? Again, from the scientist's own mouth, validating what I was saying earlier. So in case people are saying what I'm saying, um, you know, it hasn't got any basis, it's not just me saying it, Uta Frith has been in a field of autism all these years, she is saying it. I have read her early books, by the way, and they made so much sense to me. And, uh, she was the one who first brought Asperger's into the mainstream. I think it was her and um, Judith Gould and Lorna Wing as well. And the original formulation of Asperger's was a milder, in inverted commas, form of classic autism. So it was different to classic autism, not quite as severe as classic autism, but although milder in comparison to classic autism, was still a very serious impairment with people with Asperger's really struggling to make relationships, like I do, and basically with cognitive impairments at the heart of a disorder, 
and I have cognitive impairments which are shown in my school reports and everything like that. Um, so it's a really serious thing. Most people with Asperger's do, do, cannot go on to be, have successful careers and stuff. Not because they're not intelligent, because people with Asperger's do have a verbal intelligence that people with classical autism don't have, but because of a severe um, executive functioning impairments and all these other impairments that were part of the original classical formulation of Asperger's before it got completely watered down for all these neurodiversity peoples. Um, and I think it was Uta Frith or was it Lorna Wing? One of them said that when they um, started talking about Asperger's, they were a bit worried that this would open up a floodgate of loads of like basically normal people getting diagnosed who don't really have any problems. And it kind of has happened. I mean, look at Melanie Sykes. Okay, so I'm going to move over to video number two now. Um, and to carry on this video, so moving over to video number two.